The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Are you one of the 47 million Americans who benefit from group insurance? Listen carefully to this special message from Mr. Gwillem A. Price, president of the Westinghouse Electric Corporation. Mr. Price says, and I quote, We are glad to make group surgical benefits available to 40,000 of our employees and hospital expense insurance available to them as well as to their wives and children. Last year, one-tenth or 4,000 of the employees insured and 6,600 of their dependents were hospitalized. Of the employees insured, 3,000 underwent surgical operations. The value of their group insurance protection provided at such low cost is proved by the fact that the Equitable Society paid more than $700,000 in total benefits to these families in a single year. Yes, group insurance is something worth owning. In a few minutes, the Equitable Life Assurance Society will give further important information about group insurance, which will interest both employers and employees. Tonight's FBI file, Danger in the Jury Box. Noah Webster, in his dictionary, defines the word criminal as one who has committed a crime. He further defines the word crime as an act or omission, forbidden by law and punishable upon conviction. But those definitions, we feel, do not go far enough. Whether he is one of the war criminals who recently died at Nuremberg, or a petty thief who was convicted in your hometown for snatching a lady's handbag, the criminal all over the world has one common characteristic. He cannot be happy unless he's running something. He must be Mr. Big, even if he's stealing pennies. That is the criminal. He is the cancer in the body of the American nation today. Tonight's file opens in the comfortable dining room of a suburban home occupied by Tom Harris and his daughter, Joyce. They're finishing dinner when Joyce breaks the silence. How'd you like dinner, Pop? Oh, fine, fine. You said this morning you didn't know what you wanted, so I took a chance on lamb chop. Well, they were very good. Oh, and, uh, Joyce. Yes, Pop? Uh, you're going to get yourself married soon, so let me give you some advice. What's that? When a man finishes breakfast, he doesn't know what he wants to eat for dinner that night. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll remember. Have some more coffee? All right, just a swallow. Oh, that's, a, that's enough. All right, Pop. Oh, thanks, dear. Uh, I'm kind of tired tonight. Mm, you look tired. Very busy at the office today? Yes, I cleaned up my desk so I wouldn't have anything to worry about while I'm serving on the jury. When does the trial start? Well, I reported for jury duty this afternoon, and right off the bat, they picked me to serve in a case tomorrow. I guess it's going to be tough staying away from the office, isn't it? Yes, but after all, I'm a citizen, and I want good government. Serving on juries is part of my duty. You know, you're a very wonderful pop to have. Thanks. <laughs> well, I think I'll run down to the corner for a paper, see what's going on in the world. Okay. I'll clean up while you're gone. Good. See you later. Hey, you. Hey, you, come in. Me? Yeah, you. Is your name Thomas J. Harris? Yes, that's right. Okay, you're the guy. Get in here next to me. But I'm going down the corner. Now look, mister, let's don't fight. 
You see this thing? Why, it's a gun. That's right. Now do what I say. Come on, get in the car. In the center of that same city, even as Mr. Harris is being carried off, Special Agent Jim Taylor is reporting to the FBI field office. As he enters... Well, hello, Jim. Hello, Mike. What are you doing out here? I came out to testify in that Paul Scott case. The Paul Scott case? That's right. Scott goes on trial here tomorrow for stealing automobiles and carrying them across the state line from here to Illinois. You here as a witness? Mm Mm-hmm. Prosecuting attorney thought he might need me. I made the arrest about three months ago. Oh, well, that's why I didn't know about the case. Well, that's right. You were in the uh, Salt Lake City office then, weren't you? That's right. Who is this Paul Scott? Uh, He was the brains behind the operation. They stole cars in about ten states. Yeah? How'd you make the collar? Well, I got a tip that he was eating at a place over on Market Street. I went over. There he was, and I brought him in. Well, that easy, huh? (laughs) Easy as that. They set the bail at 100000 and he couldn't raise it. Oh, I remember the case. Now that you mention that 100000 sure. Say, what was the nickname the papers pinned on Scott? The Blade. Oh, yeah. There was a knife on him with a six-inch blade when I arrested him. Yeah. Sounds like a nice chum to go on a cruise with. Well, I don't think Mr. Scott will be taking many cruises when this trial is over. Good. Oh, you go ahead, Mark. Finish that report you're working on. I've got some people to see downtown. Can you tell me why I'm blindfolded? So you can't see where you're going? But what is this all about? Look, mister, I can't talk to you about it. Are we going to meet somebody? Yeah. When? Real soon. Well, can you tell me... I can't tell you nothing. Now shut up. Okay, mister. We're going to pick up the boss. When? Right now. John, this is the right guy? Yeah, this is Mr. Thomas J. Harris, ain't you? That's right. Now, can you tell me what this is all about? Yeah, I'll tell you. That's fine. You're on the jury in the Paul Scott case, Mr. Harris. I am. I'm a friend of Paul Scott, and I want to make a deal with him. Deal? Yeah. If you see to it that Scott beats this rap, there's five G's in it for your end. You mean you... I mean, I want you to see to it that Scott is found not guilty by that jury. But I'm only one man, I... Yeah, but you can swing some other votes once you get into that jury room. And there's 5,000 in it for you. But I can't, I... Mr. Harris, I know this is kind of sudden. Don't give me an answer now. When do you have to know? Joe will call you up later on tonight at your house. And, uh, remember one thing. What's that? It ain't going to be a healthy world for you if you don't go along with us. Think that over, Mr. Harris. Think it over. Now, don't get too excited, Joyce. It's, It's nothing. Nothing? You get picked up and your eyes are taped and it's nothing? I'm going to call the police. Well, sit down, dear. I don't want you to call anyone. Oh, but, Pop, you can't go through with it. Well, don't think I want to. Are they going to come here later? No. One of them is going to call on the telephone. All right. When the phone rings, we'll just let it ring. Promise me you won't answer it. But, Joyce, I'm afraid to think what they'll do. They're dangerous men. Then you've got to call the police. If I call the police, I couldn't tell them who to arrest. Why not? Well, I saw the one who picked me up outside, but... I never saw the other one, the boss. Oh. And even so, even if they arrested both of them, the gang is bigger than that. Somebody would... Well, somebody might try to kill me. But you could get police protection. For the rest of my life? I wouldn't want that. Let it ring, Pop. Let it ring. Come in. Hello, Jim. Hello, Mark. Thought I wasn't going to see you till tomorrow night. Can't you stand being away from the office? I came back here to go to work. Work? 
You want to start at this hour on what? Mark, when I left here, I went down to police headquarters. I've picked up a very interesting rumor. About the Scott case? That's right. There may be some tampering going on with the jury that was picked for that case this afternoon. Oh, how do they figure? Well, it seems that Scott has been bragging to some of the others around the jail that everything is in the bag for him to get an acquittal. And one of them talked? That's it. One of Scott's cellmates told a trustee, and he told the warden. And the warden called police headquarters? Right. Well, what do we do now? Well, the first thing to do is get a list of the jurors who were chosen this afternoon. Okay. When we get that list, we'll take the matter up with the prosecuting attorney and the judge. And I guess they'll want us to go down and have a talk with them one by one. That'd be my guess. Come on, let's get moving. How long has it been now, Pop? Since the phone rang. Uh Uh-huh. About an hour. Why? Well, maybe it worked. Maybe they think you're not at home. Yes, maybe. Why don't you go up and go to bed, Pop? Uh, I I think I will. I I don't know if I'll be able to sleep, but... What do you think? Yes, it's probably them. Don't answer the door. Joyce, if they've come this far, they're not going away that easy. I'll get it. Hello, Mr. Harris. Why didn't you answer the phone, Mr. Harris? Well, I thought maybe you... He didn't answer the phone because he's not going to take your bribe. Where did you come from? Out of the woodwork? That's my daughter, Joyce. Tell her to mind her own business. What my father does is my business. Look, Mr. Harris, I came over here to talk to you. Do we need this broad? Joyce, please go back into the kitchen. No, Pop. I'm going to stay here. Well, if you stay here, shut up. Now, mister, I ain't got time to be spending all night here. What's the word? I don't see how I can do what you ask. You mean you ain't gonna play ball with us? I don't... Now, wait. Wait a minute. Before you make up your mind, I got something to tell you. What is it? The boss said to tell you if you said no, that he'd raise the ante to 10,000 bucks. $10,000? That's right. Now, that's a lot of cabbage, mister, just for a couple of days' work. You can go back and tell the boss that I'm not for sale. What? You heard him. He's not for sale. Now get out before I call the police. Before you what? Before I call the police. Lady, stay away from that phone. I said drop that phone and I meant it. Say, that's my daughter. You... I know it's your daughter, mister, but she was going to call the cops. Now look, I'm going to let you loose, but don't try anything. Joyce. Joyce, dear. She'll be all right. She was only knocked out for a little while. Get out of here. You mean your answer is still no? That's right. Okay, I got some news for you. I'm taking your daughter with me and keeping her until you decide to vote the right way. Oh, no, you're not. No. We will return in just a moment to tonight's file, which shows how your FBI promotes national security. Now let's hear from a typical American worker who has attained greater personal security thanks to his employer's cooperation and the equitable society. Well, I want to tell you, it sure saved me a lot of headaches when my company signed up for complete group insurance. Yes, it surely does add up to a lot. Your plan gives you life insurance, accident and sickness insurance, and a retirement income, plus hospital, medical, and surgical benefits for yourself, your wife, and family. All in one package from the Equitable Life Assurance Society. And no medical examination. And my payroll deduction for group insurance is so small, I hardly notice it. So how do they do it anyway? Simply because your employer bears part of the cost. And also, there are enough of you so that the Equitable Society is able to sell it at what amounts to a wholesale price. That's why group insurance is such a great buy. That's right, Mr. Cross. Uh, Listen to this. When I got hurt in the plant and was laid up over a month, the Equitable Society sent me a check that covered nearly all my earnings for the time I was out. Group insurance was originated by the Equitable Society in 1911. Thomas I. Parkinson, president of the Equitable Society, says, Group insurance is the most inspiring life insurance development of our time. If your company does not have group insurance, or if your company's group program is incomplete... Your management can get in touch with the nearest office of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. (laughs) 
And now back to the FBI file, Danger in the Jury Box. Many of you who listen to these programs taken from the files of your FBI regard the crime wave as something that is foreign to your particular person, as something that is happening to someone else. Pick up your local newspaper tonight, though, and look at the headlines. Three bandits escape after gem robbery. Grand jury probes election murder. Two rob liquor store. Police hunt missing co-ed, gunmen kill hold-up victim and fight. Those are ordinary headlines in every day's papers. Those crimes may be happening to strangers, but they are not happening to strange people. They're happening to people every day, to people like you. Tonight's file continues in the living room of the Harris home. Special Agents Jim Taylor and Mark Jackson are questioning Mr. Harris about the events of an hour earlier. And you say the man who abducted your daughter is the same man who... Yes. It was the same man who drove me away after dinner. I see. You don't know his name, of course. Well, Forrest called him Joe one time. Oh? I said it might have been just to throw you off. Maybe. Uh... You don't by any chance remember hearing any peculiar sounds while you were on the ride with Joe, do you, Mr. Harris? No, I don't. Uh, I was so puzzled about the whole thing. Yeah. And afraid that I wasn't particularly listening for anything. Well, I can understand that. You don't have to be ashamed of being afraid, Mr. Harris. No. I don't know anyone who likes having a gun stuck against his ribs. Now, let's get this straight, sir. You say Joe was about five feet ten inches tall. That's right. With light complexion and blonde hair. Correct. And he had a scar on his right cheek that slanted toward his ear. Yes. Well, that might be enough identification for us. Mr. Taylor, all I want is my daughter. I don't care about catching those gangsters. We'll do our very best to find both of them, Mr. Harris. You can depend on that. What shall I do tomorrow? Do you want me to go to court? Yes. You go to court just as if nothing had happened. We'll get word to the judge, and if he agrees, we'll get an adjournment of a few days. What good will that do? It'll give them a chance to get in touch with you again. And if they do... If they do, you tell them that you'll play ball with them. But... uh... That's just so that you can get your daughter back. Then we'll try to catch them when you've got nothing at stake. I see. In all kidnapping cases, Mr. Harris, the object of the FBI is to first ensure the safety of the victim. Then catch the kidnappers. I didn't know that. Now, we're going down to police headquarters and see if we can find a picture of the man you described for us as Joe. If we do, we'll be back here to see you. Who's there? It's me, Joe. Okay, wait a minute. All right, come on in. Yeah, boss. What'd he say, Joe? He said no, but I got everything fixed up. He went for the 10000 No, but I snatched his daughter. You what? I snatched his daughter, and I, I told him we wouldn't bring her back until after he said okay. Holy chap! How stupid can you get? What do you mean? I thought that was real smart. You see, now he's got to help Paul beat the rap. Don't you ever read the papers, you ape? Don't get mad, boy. Sure, I, I read the papers. Did you see where three guys went to the chair last week back east on a snatch? Yeah, but this guy can't squawk, boss. Oh. Where is she, the girl? Over in my apartment. Where's that? 51 State Street. What floor are you on? For the apartment? Yes, yes. Well, it's in the cellar, and I got a gag. Is she blindfolded, too? Sure, boss. You don't think I'm that dumb. I won't answer that. Now, listen. And hear me good. I hear you good. I want you to go back to that apartment, pick up that girl, and take her back home. What? I got enough trouble trying to get the blade out of the jam he's in without getting into a jackpot myself. Now, go ahead and let her loose. Okay, boss. Whatever you say. Pick me up tomorrow morning. Now, we got to get out of town for a while. Oh, Mr. Taylor, Mr. Jackson, do you have any word about my daughter? No, not yet, but of course we sent out the alarm only about an hour ago. I've never spent an hour like this last one. I'm sure you haven't, Mr. Harris. 
Yes, sir. Will you take a look at these three pictures and see if any one of them is Joe? No, not this one. Mm -hmm. Yes, this last one. This is Joe. That's fine. Oh, I don't think I can stand much more of my... Mr. Harris, we'd like... Joyce! Oh, Oh, thank God you're home. Are you all right? Yes. But how... How did you get here? That man brought me back. Dropped me on the corner. Oh, it's so good to have you home. Pop, who are these men? Oh, uh, this is Mr. Taylor Joyce and Mr. Jackson. They're, they're from the FBI. Oh, the FBI. That's wonderful. Yeah, maybe you'd better sit down, Miss Harris. All right. Thank you. I'm a little weak in the knees. Oh, my poor baby. Tell me, did they hurt you? No, except when that Joe knocked me out while I was telephoning. Where did he take you, Miss Harris? I don't know, Mr. Taylor. I, I was blindfolded after we got into the car. You were conscious then? Yes. I guess the fresh air revived me. Oh, I see. Did you get to talk to the boss too, Miss Harris? No, I didn't. Joe took me to a place and then left. In a little while he came back and drove me home. He seemed very mad. Oh? Sounds like maybe the kidnapping was his own idea and the boss didn't like it. Yeah, it does. Jury tampering's one thing, kidnapping's another. Can you tell us anything about the place he took you to? Well, we, we rode for, I should say, 20 minutes. Well, that means you stayed within the city limits. Do you have any idea where you were when you got out? Well, we went down a flight of steps off the street. I see. Into a cellar? Yes. While I was down there, I could hear people talking when they walked over the grating in front. Could you hear what they were saying? Yes, there, there must have been a movie right near there. They were talking about the picture, the killers. The killers? That's a good picture. I saw it. Uh, tell me, what time was this? I guess about one o'clock. Did you hear anything else? Yes. There was an automobile smash-up almost in front of the building while I was there. I heard the crash, and in a little while I heard an ambulance arrive. Well, thank you, Miss Harris. That ought to be enough for us. Come on, Mark. We've got work to do. <laughs> Here's that map you asked for, Jim. Oh, it's got well. the whole city laid out, block by block. Okay, let's get some pins. I got you. There's pins with different colored heads. Then we'll get police reports on all accidents between 1 and 2 this morning. Right. I'll check on all the movie houses that are playing the killers. Then we'll want the hospital records and ambulance calls between 1 and 2 from every hospital. Check. I'll arrange for that. We'll put a red pin in the map every place we find a movie house with the killers. A white pin where we find an auto crash and a blue pin where we find an ambulance pickup. I'll make all the phone calls now. You get the hospital and police records. I'll find out about the movie houses. Seventh and Main. There it is. Yeah. Okay, that's the last of the movie houses pinned down. All right, here are the records from police headquarters, Jim. Right. Let's start on that. By the time we're through, maybe the hospital records will be here. Okay, you want to take this first cheat and I'll okay. work on the second? Let's keep going. We've got no time to spare. Is that the last pin on the hospital pickups? That's right, Jim. That's all. Good. Now, let's check this map. Okay. There's the place with all three pins together. Yes. Fifth and State Street. Okay, now let's find Joe. Who's there? Me, Joe. Oh. Okay, come on in. Hey, boys, how come the door ain't locked? The kid's coming up from the drugstore with my breakfast. Oh. I'll be finished packing here in a minute. Hey, look, boss, when are we going to get out of here? As soon as I eat breakfast. That quick, huh? Sure. we got to get out of town. This heat gets off us. And, uh, speaking of heat, did you get rid of the girl? Yeah, yeah, I dropped her off near where she lives. Anybody see her? Nope, street was empty. Good. Uh, hey, boss, are, are we going to stay away a long time? No, just until we find out whether that guy Harris called the cops about his daughter. If we got no kidnapping rap against us, we can back. Oh, good. You see, I want to tell my girl... You tell your girl nothing. Don't tell anybody where we're going or why. You can tell her when we come back. Okay. Where is that kid with my breakfast? Now, listen. We finished packing. Let's get out of here. We can get some coffee on the road. All right. Well, don't move, either of you. Who are you? Who are these other people? If you insist on formal introductions, this is Mr. Harris. Maybe you didn't recognize him without any tape over his eyes. This is his daughter, Joyce. And this is Mark Jackson. We're both special agents of the FBI. Mr. Whiskers? That's us, Joe. Well, what brought you here? We pieced together Miss Harris's story. 
Found out where Joe had taken her last night, then we waited outside Joe's place all night with Mr. Harris and his daughter. And when Joe came out this morning, we just followed him here. Why, you stupid, Here we are, Mr. Martin. Mr. Harris, close your eyes for a moment. All right, Mr. Martin. Ask Mr. Harris a question. Any question. I have nothing to say to Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris, is that the voice? Yes. That's the voice I heard when Joe brought me to talk to somebody. I'd know it anywhere. All right, Mr. Martin. You too, Joe. You were so interested in juries, we're going to give you a chance to face one. Herbert Martin and his hired thug, Joseph Wentworth, were tried separately and were both convicted. Wentworth was convicted of kidnapping and received a 20-year sentence. Herbert Martin was convicted of conspiring to bribe a federal juror and is now serving a long sentence in the penitentiary. This case was brought to you tonight from the files of your FBI to show with what thoroughness your FBI works on every case that falls within its jurisdiction. Not every case is solved easily. Not every case is solved quickly. But the record of your FBI proves that the most difficult cases are broken open because no clue is too small, no lead too improbable for the FBI to follow up. It is that painstaking care with the most minute detail that has brought your FBI the worldwide reputation it has. A reputation as invincible protectors of you the American people. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Now, one last word to business executives... Since group insurance was originated by the Equitable Life Assurance Society 35 years ago, thousands of employers have learned that group insurance means satisfied workers, builds loyalty and morale, decreases labor turnover, improves quality and quantity of production. Get all the facts and figures from an Equitable Society group insurance expert. Whether your employees are entirely uninsured or have only partial protection... Get in touch with the nearest office or write direct to the New York Home Office of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Operation Roomba. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight's broadcast was directed by William M. Sweets. The music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Operation Rumba, on This is Your F. B.I. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.